uh, there are deliberate policies that are focused on helping the average entrepreneurs, particularly the SMEs, uh, to access credit at an affordable rate and on terms and conditions that they can easily meet. So a lot has been said about uh, recapitalizing the Bank of Industry, establishing the Development Bank of Nigeria, and a series of other initiatives. But the question really is, we need to hit the ground running. I would like to see a tax policy that focuses on encouraging uh, entrepreneurs by way of granting them uh, tax concessions so that a lot more entrepreneurs can come into the, into the tax net and also they can run uh, profitable businesses, employ more people, grow, expand and make further contributions uh, to the Nigerian economy. Well, I imagine that the needs of those who are, you know, who are local businessmen and those who are coming from the outside will be quite different. Correct. For those who are coming from the outside, because I believe that that's where immigration comes in mm -hmm. uh, and, and the visa policy, for instance, mm -hmm. what do you think they'll be looking to see mostly? Well, for um, external investors looking into Nigeria, there are a number of things. Um, they want to see, for example, that uh, government has rolled out investor-friendly uh, policies. Um, can, how easily can they come into Nigeria? How easily can they set up businesses? What manner of support is government willing to provide, particularly if they choose to invest in critical sectors of the Nigerian economy, particularly those areas that are largely underdeveloped? So they want to also see that they are coming into an environment where there is rule of law, where there is the sanctity of contracts. So there is a lot, government has said a lot about um, encouraging the private sector. The economic growth and recovery plan is full of uh, references to private sector participation. It is important that a robust framework is created. It is important that contracts are abided by. It is important that there is recourse in the event that there is a dispute. So a lot of these people want assurance from government. Now we have a plan. Part of the challenges historically was over the last two years was where exactly is this government headed to in terms of direction so that they can have a sense of what the investment climate will look like. Now we have a document. It is now, a, it is now down to government and all the actors of the economy to actually now start implementing these things faithfully. I believe that if the right policy framework is created, then foreign direct direct investment will come into Nigeria. There are still some issues around the foreign exchange policy that really has not yet been addressed. We are just benefiting from the fact that over the last three months or so, oil prices have been on the up and up. But in the last three weeks, two to three weeks now, the prices have started to soften. Uh, U.S. supplies of crude oil has increased, so the prices are moderating downwards somewhat. So the question is, if that trend should persist, how will that impact on all of the gains we have made with regards to our foreign exchange, uh, to re with regard to the strength of the Nigerian currency? So foreign investors will be looking to see that we have a forex policy that is market determined so that they can come in and they can exit with uh, very little difficulty. Well, it definitely takes me to the, my next question because we've seen some of these things that are being done, uh, mm -hmm. the FX policy, we, we can also see uh, the immigration policy. In your opinion, do you think that, do you think there are flashes in the pan, something that, or do you think there are things that we can actually sustain? Well, I think we are, um, Nigeria is a beneficiary of a good dose of uh, good luck. Um, the fact that oil prices have remained uh, firmly above $50 for the last um, uh, easily six or seven months or so, I think that has helped Nigeria uh, increase its uh, foreign reserves. So our reserves have grown from about $24 uh, billion several months ago, and it crossed into, it was in excess of $30 billion uh, as, a, as at the moment. Now, it is.
as a result of the high oil prices that, gov that the reserves have increased, and that is what has encouraged the CBN to pump in excess of $2.2 billion into the market in the last three weeks, and that is what has driven the appreciation of the Naira. My fear is if oil moves in a different direction, we're back to square one. So my sense is until we fundamentally and frontally address the issues around our foreign exchange policy, uh, the, unless and until we do that, we will really be driven by the vagaries of, the, of, of crude oil prices in, in the international markets, and that is not sustainable. You know, you spoke about access to credit, which is a very important component in that ease of doing business uh, index. Because, mm -hmm. and, and when you said that, uh, I mean, banks, one of the CEOs talked about him, mm -hmm. or they wanting to lend to government. Mm -hmm. That's very worrying because, I mean, if the SMEs don't mm -hmm. get access to credit, mm -hmm. Government alone is not going to be doing business with themselves. Mm -hmm. How do we solve that? Well, I'll tell you something, uh, Chamberlain. The truth is, over the last, for as long as I can remember, SMEs have not really had access to credit. Nigerian banks are not focused on SMEs. There is a lot of talk about retail banking and this and that, but Nigerian banks are not yet ready. They have not built the capacity to be able to bank that segment of the economy in a viable manner. And I think it is born out wow. of a lack of capacity. So the banks themselves need to build capacity. To say that an SME is not your regular running in the mail client that ticks all of the boxes. This guy comes with various challenges. He's struggling with financial reporting. He's struggling with corporate governance. He's struggling with the need, with the capacity to put together a viable business. So banks must start to wear an advisory hat and say, how do I make this SME client bankable? Because these guys constitute the largest part of the Nigerian economy. So if you are ignoring them, it means that you will essentially be focusing on the top end, which is what the banks have done historically. Focus on the large corporates, focus on the big oil and gas companies. And when oil price tanks the way it did two years ago, they have huge non-performing loan portfolios. So my, my hope is that banks have learned something from this experience and are coming down market. So they need to partner with the SMEs, help them build capacity. Government must also contribute. Private sector agents must also contribute contribute to this initiative, make these people more bankable, provide soft loans for them, reduce the, the, the hurdles that are currently before them. For you to be able to access even the CBN's intervention fund today, which you can, from which you can borrow a maximum of 50 million at 9% uh, interest rate for up to 5%, you must bring tangible collateral. That well, knocks what, what off 70% of you do, the SME space. Yeah, we, 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 we gotta go. Oh, we <laughs> gotta go. Yeah, we have oh. to go. Uh, Bioritim is a business market analyst and an investment banker. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. Well, we'll be back in a moment. We'll have another perspective on the same matter. Do join us again.